All right, guys, welcome to our summer project. Um, this is our 20 foot flat bottom aluminum boat that we are building a duck blind on. And uh, basically what I'm gonna go through is the basic dimension. So what we've started with is a square frame. We've got these clamps that hook onto the edge of the boat right here, these clamps. So we've bolted in our three quarter inch pipe to here and here. And then we adjusted this to give us the right length that we need. This was all just piping that came from an old blind. And so we just adjusted it to the size that we wanted. And we're gonna stabilize this. We're gonna put bolts in here and make this sturdy and the same on this side over here. So this frame sits one full square. One full square all the way across. Clamp there, clamp there, clamp there, and clamp there. Now my blind frame is going to be about eight feet from this edge to here. And from here to the front where my platform is, is 13 feet. Now everybody's is gonna be different obviously. The floor of my boat is five feet wide. So I know that I have five foot of blind space. So what I have done is decided that this from the bottom of my boat, this piece here, to the bottom of my boat is 52 inches, all right? And what we've done is I have made this from here to the bottom of my boat, this piece here up is one foot. Uh, this is gonna be my basically my storage area. I'm gonna have one foot of storage area that runs all the way along the inside of this boat that I can stick stuff in. And obviously it's gonna be a little bit larger than that because I have this piece here that comes out. So the next part of our frame that we've worked on so far, after we have our upright here, we are establishing the base of the back of the frame. Um, before we work on the front or anything else, we're gonna finish this back part of our 13 foot frame. So what we've got here is these aluminum angles and these steel angles. All of this metal, is metal that I already had, which makes me resourceful. And another word for resourceful is cheap. So we have put this together like this. This gives you a good strong foundation and this base here. I'm gonna explain a little bit as we build this up why I put this shelf here and then why I'm gonna have it go from here to here at that point. So right now we're just getting this set up on both sides, also down there. And then we're also gonna put angles in here and here in the same spot. So that is held up here. So we're gonna keep working on that. All right, so we just finished up mounting this corner, this piece here, and this piece here, and this piece here. So this is the back side of the blind, all right? One important thing to note is I'm putting all of my screws and my ends facing out because I don't want to snag myself and any that I haven't done that with, I'm going to change over. But I don't want to tear my waders or my coats. So everything um, bolt wise is going to be facing the outside of the boat. That way I'm not catching myself on it, all right? So from here, what we're gonna work on is putting our angle from this to this. For that, what we're using is Unistrut, like this, like so and square angles. And we're gonna show you how we're gonna set that up. He's got it marked here, where we're gonna first put our first mark. So we're gonna get cranking on that. And then uh, when we're done with that, I'll explain it from there. All right, so what we've finished up for tonight and what Gary's working on down here is these angles coming up to the top of the blind. All right, so this is Unistrut and square angles that we've then bolted to it. The nice thing about using the Unistrut is it's already pre-drilled, makes it so that you can get that angle really, really easily. Otherwise, I'd have to take aluminum like this or all my long giant pieces, giant pieces of aluminum that I'm cutting up and I'd have to cut it and drill it. But the Unistrut comes in handy. So we've got Unistrut here, a piece here, same thing attached to our square angles and a piece here, and he's working on attaching that one there. And that's where we'll end for tonight. All right, 
So the next thing that we've done here, after we finished building this foundation piece here, is we attached a piece that runs the entire length that is gonna be our ceiling here. Now this is exactly 16 inches from this outside to this outside all the way down. Um, and what that does is that will give us space here to kind of sit and look out when we're sitting in our stools. There'll be a six inch gap, a viewing gap here, and then the doors. So what we did is we took these pieces of aluminum, we took a pipe bender, we bent them to a 90 degree angle. <coughs> to fit these pipes into each other, Gary took a half inch piece of steel and he actually laid it on there and he hammered them in. So it crimped, <coughs> so it crimped those edges and we did that three times here and here. And then these are for support. Um, also for support will be a beam that comes like a flat iron piece that'll come from here to here and the same on the other side. So this is the foundation of our roof. So that way when we're sitting in here, say this is my bench height, I can look out and see, and I'll be able to see the birds, but they won't be able to see me from behind. We've got, to recap, 52 inches from here to the floor, 16 inches from the outside of this piece to the outside of this piece. We've got six inches from this piece to this piece, this direction. We've got 18 inches from this piece here to this piece here, okay? That gives me a foot and a half kind of, of, uh, of storage space here. Um, and that is the basic foundation of the back of the blind. When we get this built up a little bit more back here, um, I'm gonna put what I call like tree holders here that will stand up that I can slide little saplings and different small trees that we cut down that will stick up out the back side of the boat, one on each of those posts. And uh, when this is all said and done, this is gonna be a pretty sweet blind. So that's, that's where we're at so far. All right, so today, basically what we've done is we've anchored our blind a little bit more to the boat, so it's a little bit more sturdy. Um, mostly so when we're driving down the freeway, I'm not worried about the uh, blind falling apart. So what we've done is we've added this 3 4 inch uh, unistrut to the bottom here tapped it in with some tap screws and, and made some spacers there and then attached it to our blind and these are 52 inch pieces because our blind is 52 inches tall um, and that gives that quite a bit of stability and it's not in the way of where we're going to be walking and sitting and everything else all right so what i've done today is i have attached the front or started the front of the blind here. Um, what you can see is that I basically built this just like the back where it's built on these angles. The difference is, is this is a high-low blind design. So the front ultimately is gonna be shorter than the back. Um, what we had to do for this is basically attach these. And because I didn't have aluminum that was long enough to span the entire length of this from here to there, um, I had to hodgepodge this together. So what I did is I took these pieces and I cut it into thirds for the length that I needed. And inside of those, I slid some three fourths inch conduit, about a foot long piece that's in between there. And then I bolted those down. There, there, there and there. So because of the way that I'm building my blind, it's 52 inches tall in the back. This piece here is 11 inches tall. Okay, so that's just built to the specification so that when I'm done and I'm here, it should be 48 inches at the top of my doors up there. All right, guys, so I kind of talked about how I slid the conduit into here. I kind of wanted to show you. This is a foot long piece of conduit. So that's a foot long and I'm gonna slide it into this here. And that sticks out. This obviously just hits the back of my angle. And then what I'm going to do, let me set my camera down in here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this piece here and slide it over the top and marry those up. Once I'm done doing that, 
then I drill through it, put a bolt and a nut on each side, and I'll do that. And I'll do that a total of two more times right here. One here, one there. And that'll be the end of the front of the frame without the flaps put on it or the doors. All right, so I just finished up the frame structure for the front and the back. So I kind of wanted to show you um, what it's like to be sitting inside here. Now this is 52 inches. You can see that I got a pretty good gap for my head here. The stools that I'm sitting on, these are what we're gonna use inside of them that we're gonna be free floating. And uh, this here is our front of the blind without the flaps on it. So from here, there's gonna be flaps to come down. Uh, so you can kind of see that when you go to shoot, you stand up here, you push your flap over, and then you have this nice big wide area that you can shoot out of um, for this blind. The next thing that I need to do basically is stabilize this here to here. And I'm gonna be using more of that Unistrut to do that, to stabilize that there. For dimensions, basically what I've got is from my rail here, I've got 18 inches or a foot and a half to here to this bolt. Um, from there, to there. Now this piece here is also 18 inches high. So it's 18 inches, this is 11 inches. This gives you a nice gradual increase up to here for your high low. So then the blind flaps will come up from here to about here and that's where they'll sit. That will push open. All right guys, so basically what I've done today so far is I have attached the support structure from the 11 inch piece here the 18 inch piece here and that completes the final non-moving part of my blind so here we've got a good chunk of unistrut you can see what i've done here is i've taken this carriage bolt and i've threaded it through on this 90 degree angle here and up there um, and that just stabilizes this whole thing um, what i've been working on as well are the hinges for my flaps um, the tough part about hinges is that they have to be fairly precise. So now I'm gonna show you kind of what I'm doing to make sure that I get as accurate of measurements as possible. That way I'm not completely screwing this up. All right, so in my blind I'm building four flaps. Basically what I've done is I've taken the entire length of this pole here and I have divided it into four sections. So from there, that gives me these lines. Now I know that between my flaps I want a four inch viewing gap okay so that gives me enough of a gap that I can kind of see through but it isn't going to be terribly difficult to cover is going to be a big black hole that the birds can see so if I've got a four inch gap here this is my quarter mark I am putting my hinges three inches from there on both sides that way I get a little bit of room for these to go okay so my measurement here is the same as here. I've got four inch gap between where my quarter mark is, four inch gap here, three inches from that I've put this hinge in. Now the important thing about the hinges is that they have to be as close as possible so that when you put your blind flaps on, they're not crooked, they're not, um, bending incorrectly you want them to be as smooth as possible and hinges can be <clears throat> hinges can be kind of tricky taking my tape measure i know that i have my four inch gap right here okay so from this side of it because i already have this one this will be door number four i go three inches from that gap right there and that's going to be the start of where i put my hinge and because of the way that this metal is set up i may have to adjust that a little bit or just crimp it down real tight so that I get the angle that I want, all right? So this is my spot right here. The first thing that I do is to make sure that these are as even as possible as I kind of line this up, right? And I've done this all the way throughout. Line up where I want this kind of to be, and then I mark it on the hinge itself where it should line up with the edge of the aluminum piping. 
tubing. So now I've taken that and I place it at my three inch mark and I mark it like that. Okay, so this is where it gets really important. If I want to make sure that this lines up properly, I mark my aluminum and then if I can, I take my drill from right there, give this a nice firm press, make sure I'm still in the right spot, I'm a little off there. Take my drill and I drill through the hole. in my thing there, okay? So that gives me my starting hole. The key is, is that you do this one hole at a time and you attach it one hole at a time because if you don't, what's gonna end up happening is these are gonna get crooked like this or like this and you wanna make sure you do it one at a time. So I'm gonna put my bolt in here. Probably what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grind this down, but I'm gonna put my bolt in here and then I'm gonna attach it as firmly as I can but still give me a little bit so that I can move it and then I will drill that hole through the hinge itself. That way you get as, as even as a mark as you can. Okay. All right, so I've now ground this edge flat so that I can attach this properly. I'm gonna slide this in here. And I'm gonna kind of put that on. I'm gonna line it up as best I can. Grab my ratchet here. Punch it on there. All right. Nice and tight. That gives you a nice firm mount and you can see my lines are still lined up. And I'm there. So, because I haven't marked that, but this is now attached, let's take my other drill. I'm going to punch through that hole. Done. All right. Take my other bolt. Bust off the burrs on the bottom here. Bolt comes up through the hole. Nut attaches. Ratchet it down. All right, just like that, plain and simple. Hinge is on, okay? Three inch gap, four inch gap. These are my quarter inch marks here. So all I have now is to put one more over here and uh, I will be finished with putting on my hinges and next comes building the doors. Okay guys, so I finally finished the first door or the first flap to the blind. Um, and I've still got to install a stop there so it stops but I've basically got this front half piece done so I'm installing four doors one of the things that I did is once I built this I made it as close to a six inch gap here as possible and I actually ended up flipping my hinges around when I first started doing this I had put them like that over there and figured out that it's actually a lot more effective if I bring them um, the hinge side to the inside and then that rests on itself there I also broke my own rule just because of range of motion and I put the nuts on this side on the inside and ended up switching the bolts there so that way it swings open more and that if I can jump in here and show you gives you quite a bit of swing so you can see from where I'm standing about where my head is so if we're sitting on our stool and this is resting here, this will swing open to there. And that should give me plenty of room to swing and shoot out of the boat. All right guys, so today on the boat, I am working on installing my mat, okay? So this is horse pad. It is three fourths inch thick. I would lift it up, but it's kind of sealed in there. See. If you can see that three fourths inch thick because these are three fourths inch thick so it gives me almost a seamless seal here uh, 
basically these were four by six pads and I've cut them because my boat is only five, five feet wide, basically. Uh, I cut a foot off of there. And basically what I used to do that, I will show you here in just a second. So this padding I chose, and I still have to do this side over here. With this padding I chose, one, because it's thick, but two, it's very grippy and uh, it's quiet. So you're not gonna make a bunch of noise, as much noise banging around in here as if you didn't have the pad. Um, and then our stools will stick to it really well. So that's kind of what I've been working on today and I'll show you what I did to cut it. Okay guys, so on my boat from that inner rail there to my other inner rail here is 58 inches, okay? So that's how I know how long these pads need to be. I had already measured my uh, width between this rail here one right there and that one right there 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 here as four feet wide okay so that's how I measured and I cut those so now I know that these this needs to be 58 inches wide so then I move to the back of my truck where I've got my pad and I find where my 58 inch mark is there so on my pad it is literally right in the middle of this a every single time so I kind of use that as my general marker and these don't have to be perfect cuts. They just have to be as best you can. So I take my long piece here and I line it up on the middle of my A. There, I pull my, I'll pull my thing out and uh, basically what I do is take my square here and I make sure that I square it up and once I get it squared up on both sides, I'll make a mark. I'll draw it across with a pencil. And then uh, I use my skill saw here with that horse in the back of the truck. And I just run it across real easy like. And then I get pieces like that. Okay guys, so I just finished up the entire frame of the blind itself. Now this is still a long ways from being finished, but I kind of want to show you what I've done so far. Uh, so. I ended up making these doors and basically what I did is I split the blind uh, the whole length of the front into fourths I measured it and divided it into fourths and that way when I swing these clothes you can see here kind of what this is gonna look like all right so this is my stool and what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy a bunch of these stools. You can buy them at Walmart. They're like five or six bucks or something really cheap. Um, you can see here kind of where our height is at. And I think this is a pretty appropriate height. Um, what that does is this is gonna be a gap here. This is going to be mesh covered or like chicken wire covered with cover on it. And this piece here is as well. This is going to be solid. Um, this gives me a nice little gap that I can view out, look at my ducks. Let me slide over so I'm actually in front of one of my four doors. So it gives me a nice gap here so I can watch my ducks flying, right? Kind of see through this piece here. And then when it's time to shoot, I can push my gate open and stand up. Um, and that works all the way down the blind here. So the only issue I ran into is this gap here is a little bit more narrow, but that's because my boat naturally narrows as most do. Um, I might correct that here in a little bit because I've got to put some stabilization here and if I lift that up and push it forward, it'll fix a little bit of that gap, but not a huge deal. All right, so the other part of this that I did is to get these to rest. I just took a piece of conduit. I had a bunch of this conduit. Uh, it's the same stuff that I was using to like connect my posts and stuff here. Um, and I just slid it down inside and I bolted it in and I gave it a little bit of a bend and I did that on all these as well uh, that way they close well and as it gets padded up it'll have a little bit of room extra to close to so the next thing that I've got to do basically is I have to build my dog blind that's gonna go on the front up here and then a little bit of cover that's gonna go in here um, you can see as I'm walking around that this rubber mat under my feet is nice and quiet, doesn't make a lot of noise. 
um, which is nice and it's very grippy so my stools don't slide around too much all right guys so um, I've actually done a lot to the boat and uh, I forgot my camera the other day so while I was working I got a lot done and so I'm gonna kind of show you what I've done so I finished up the blind here and I went ahead and put in supports for the front of the blind let me kind of show you guys what that is so what I did is I took a piece of aluminum um, and because I want this whole thing to be pretty much removable as quickly as possible uh, off of these clamps I decided not to bolt these ones in like I did over here uh, so what I did instead is I took a little piece of metal there and I'll see if I can pop this out so you can see it kind of what that looks like under there and that just drops down in here and I'll see if I can show you as well what this is here so under here so that these don't grind up uh, the bottom of my boat and mar it and potentially put a hole on it over time I cut a piece of aluminum just a small piece it's a little smaller than this and then I, I drilled halfway through it so that <clears throat> when that goes down in there and it rests inside of that spot and it protects the bottom of my boat and I did that there and I did that there and I'm probably gonna switch these which are bolted down to that same kind of a system the next thing that I did is I built the frame for the uh, front here part of it at least so because I want my dog to be comfortable I went ahead and cut out this dog glue or dog igloo what do they call it yeah dog glue uh, I went ahead and cut out this dog glue I cut the front off of it off I figure this is pretty much a perfect size for my lab uh, and it gives her the ability to have open space to move around and that way you know I can kick her or smack her when she does what I don't want her to do um, and uh, she doesn't have to feel so isolated up here and I just kind of framed that in as well as framing in from here so that these once again are attached to my clamps this piece here to there to there and to there and framed it in um, I couldn't figure out a better way to attach it to the front so I went ahead and drilled these two pieces of two by fours into the wood platform here and then I just used some big lag bolts and put those lag bolts down into the wood um, and that'll keep that on there and then uh, when it comes time to take it off I just have to take those lag bolts out or take the uh, two by fours off and uh, take off my clamps the whole thing should lift should lift off all right guys so I forgot my camera yesterday but I kind of want to show you what I did to get the siding and everything on here. Okay. So, so what I've done basically is I've taken this corrugated plastic and I took these little tappable uh, like little button screws basically and I tapped it into my aluminum frame and I definitely overkilled it but the point is, is I don't want it to come off so <coughs> I've done this here this piece here and I've done this whole part of the blind this is gonna be my opening, my gap, basically, that I'm gonna look through. And I may cut this back a little bit because it may be a little bit high. But uh, you can see that this is pretty much all covered. Um, but you can see kind of what the inside of this is gonna be like. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna install a bench in here as well. And I'll show you that as that goes along. But I chose this plastic because it's really durable. Um, I mean, it's freaking tough. Even if you poke a hole in it, because it's ribbed it doesn't really ruin the integrity of the plastic itself you can see I've put little holes in it in different spots but uh, it's really really tough and I think it'll work really good for my blind because it's lightweight um, it's completely waterproof and uh, it's kind of flexible so I was able to get kind of the the curves and the dimensions I wanted with my blind um, now I'm gonna show you guys kind of what I did with my door so let me get that set up all right guys so I kind of wanted to show you what I did to build my door and this is my door frame right here you can kind of see how it works I've got these pieces here that come off and the basic premise is this I take this door and when I'm done driving I take this door off and I shut it on just like that now 
that gives me the option. See, I, I thought about this long and hard on exactly how I was gonna do this. Um, to remove this door when I'm driving because I do have a tiller steer motor. When this door is done, I can just pull that in like that, set that to the side. And it gives me the option and the ability to be able to see out my blind because one of the issues that you get with rigid frame style blinds like that is a lack of visibility. And so I made a door that I can just lift off and set inside and then when it's good to go and we're at our spot, I can just put it back on and it'll uh, work really well. So that's kind of where I'm at today. I've got uh, my siding put up on the blind part itself. I got to work on the front build part of the back and then uh, brush it up um, and it should be good to go. I'm getting really excited. It's already into the season and this is taking way longer than I thought it would. But uh, I am being meticulous, so I will get back to you tomorrow with what I've got going on. All right, so I finally got the whole blind paneled, okay? Um, I've got the entire inside paneled, if you can see in there, and I got my dog door here ready to go. I got my door on, and I've got this side paneled and the back paneled over there. One part that I didn't do for a long time was the back, mostly because I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do and how I was gonna do this. The issue that I was running into um, is making sure that when we're hunting, this piece is concealed enough, but being that I have a tiller steer engine, um, being able to have enough visibility while we were driving. So what I ended up doing is I created two flaps, kind of like my door, that lock into each other so i'm going to show you kind of what i did to set that up all right so let me show you kind of what i did to do this properly because my blind is all built on these clamps right here i want to make it as removable as possible so that i can take it fishing in the summer and that kind of thing so that was another challenge that i ran into is how am i going to make this a removable blind but also one that uh, when i'm driving down the freeway it isn't going to come off so this is what i ended up doing i ended up bolting this piece here down and through uh, through an existing hole there and then here what I did and I don't know if you can see it really well is I have this piece here I think this is a two inch by one inch T that I uh, drilled a piece of conduit basically and screwed it in there and what that is and then at the bottom I put a bolt that I can just unscrew and that way when I take my clamp off over here this whole thing will come out with it but while I am hunting and driving down the road it is bolted in there and it won't come out okay um, and that's what I ran into so that way I can actually get this on and off properly without having to you know uh, worry about taking out a bunch of bolts and that kind of thing and I did the same thing over here, exactly the same setup, um, and bolted that in. Here, the first time I screwed it up, I didn't leave myself enough length, but this time I went ahead and gave myself plenty of space to drill that in. And that'll keep that from lifting out. So the next part that I did after I figured that out was figuring out how to build these panels so that one, they're not too tall, um, and then two, they're removable and I can just put them back on myself. Um, <coughs> so this is what I ended up doing. I took some more of my angles and after I built these doors, okay, uh, these doors are 32 inches wide and 45 inches tall all right so i left these two and a half inch bolts long here and then on this side i put it like this and basically what it does let me see if i can dock this in here real quick show you guys basically what this does is these pieces here drop in those angles 
and that happens on both sides. So I'm gonna move my camera to a little bit better spot potentially and see if I can show you kind of how I do that by myself. It's kind of a pain, much, much easier with two people. All right, guys. So you can see what I've got here. So I've got my two pieces. And the first thing that I think is important is sliding these in first up at the top. And it's just the same. I left these bolts long and I put an angle on these. Once I get that bolted in, I kind of get this somewhat situated in the right spot. And then I just slowly get my bolts dropped into the right, right spot in the right holes here. Boom. That thing's on there. And you can see it's pretty sturdy. Um, sturdy enough definitely to hunt. I went ahead and I made the back piece here at literally an inch longer than the front piece. Um, and I did that just so that I have a little bit more cover over here. And I could have definitely altered it more. But that way you can see that um, as we're going to be hunting, this will be all completely enclosed. And when I'm ready to drive it, all I have to do is take these off. And then put them inside the blind. And I have this all open. I have all of this open so that I can see the sides of me and I can see out my front again. And that's basically what I did. So I'm going to panel these up. And then it's uh, time to sp start putting on the chicken wire. It's important to know, and I think I've said this a few times through uh, this process, that my dimensions are not going to be your dimensions. Um, every boat size is different. The only thing that I can really give you, and that's in earlier in the video, is the height that you want it to be, and then the rest you kind of have to make up on your own. Um, I can tell you what I've done, but nobody's going to have exactly the same 20-foot boat uh, with the same type of setup and everything inside. All right, guys, so the boat's inside. It's paint day. I kind of wanted to show you what I did here. I got this whole thing covered in chicken wire as that was the next step after I got all my siding put on. And, uh, yeah, um, chicken wire. I'm not going to pretend like I can tell you how to do this. Look up some stuff online because that's what I ended up doing. It's basically you just... Put it in on your four corners and stretch it as tight as you can so that it's attached to your blind. I've got every piece of paneling uh, chicken wired and now it is time to paint. We're almost done with the boat. Um, after I put the chicken wire on, I painted it. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this whole thing with brush now. And uh, we've got this giant pile of weeds behind us that we're going to use but I kind of wanted to show you what I did to paint this now this because this is raw aluminum you have to use a special type of primer and it's called self etching primer it's got like an acid in it uh, so that it will grip to that to that aluminum really well um, initially I was going to do the whole thing tan but the gray primer turned out to be a green color instead and so I decided I was just going to leave it the way that it was painted all the rest of this with like a rust oleum camouflage paint and then uh, ran stripes down it and from a distance it almost looks like an old bottom lance camo but uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to start shoving brush through this whole thing and get it all brushed up and uh, it's finished and I'm pretty excited about it so I'll uh, show you what it's like when it's finished all right well we just finished brushing it all up and uh, it looks pretty dang good. Gary, pop yourself. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so, basically just packed all that, uh, all that chicken wire full of brush and weeds and stuff like that. And as you can see, when Gary stands up, he'll be able to shoot pretty well. And then when he closes his door, whoop, he's hidden. And that is the boat blind. 
we're gonna get uh, the cover on the back of the uh, motor there when we hunt as well but uh, that's it that's it show you the front and how I did the door too I mean the whole thing is just a big big pile of brush and you can see from here what the inside is like and uh, how we're gonna be able to hunt out of here and the viewing gap that we've got um, I'm pretty excited we uh, put a lot of effort into this and uh, it took me a long time to build this thing and I'm super happy that it's done and uh, hopefully the next video that I get out to you guys here soon will be of us hunting in this blind and uh, showing you how well it works. I am just crazy excited for it. So just to show you guys what it's like inside of here, um, this is that viewing gap that you've got. Some viewing gaps here. And when it's time to shoot, just push it open. And that's, that's it. That's it, and that shelf is gonna go right here. And uh, she's ready to hunt, man. I'm, I'm just crazy excited about this. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you feel like I missed anything at all, please let me know down below if you need any other explanation on what I did, if you feel like there's something that I missed because these tutorial videos are pretty hard to do. Um, Hit me up in the comments and I'll answer any questions that I can. Um, thanks again and uh, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>